Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a special little treat for all of the cacti and succulent lovers out there. We're currently on our way to the Phoenix um, Desert Botanical Garden. It's this huge botanical garden. It sits on like 140 acres and they have around 50,000 or more plant species on display. They have like hundreds of rare and endangered plant species that they take care of. So it's gonna be fun. They also have a special little butterfly exhibit going on right now, which I'm really excited about. And we are trying to get this done in like two hours. I don't know if we're gonna see everything because our plane leaves today at like three o'clock. So we have to be at the airport around like 12. Like we've gotta go pick up Ryan's parents, turn the car in and everything like that before 12. So we're gonna have to leave, like we're getting there around eight. We're gonna have to leave around like 10, 45 or something. So hopefully we get to see everything, but if not, it'll be fine. I'll just show you what I, what I can. This is the entrance to the garden and it's like dead here but i think it's because we like they open at eight we are here as soon as they open but you have to make a reservation time like you can't just come anytime you want when you purchase the tickets you have to tell them a time that you're gonna be here so we chose eight o'clock and it's nice there's like nobody here Oh my gosh, look at that big one, Ryan. That's huge. I wonder how old that is. There's already so many cacti, it's really pretty. So they have an exhibit going on right now and I can't remember what it's called, um, but I think it's like an artist makes plant stuff out of glass. So that's actually glass, that's not a plant. So this is what the exhibit is. It's Chihuly in the desert. Um, and the artist's name is Dale Chihuly. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But yeah, basically he does glasswork that looks like nature. Look at everything blooming. Okay, so here's the map. Right here, right? It's a really large <laughs> place. Did we come in here? Yeah, we came in there. So do you wanna just do this? Do you wanna no, do we should this give it first? Three, yeah. Okay. Little prickly pear. They're so cute. They're so round. Rub a little baby on. Oh my gosh, so many babies growing. This one's really cool too. So this one is called Red Teddy Bear Cholia. Chola? Cholia? Desert plants are so cool. I actually started my plant collection with, with collecting cacti, or I guess I should say my love of plants started with cacti. Because they're just so cool. So this is still the teddy bear, Choya. Look at this guy. There's another teddy bear, Choya. It's like a pumpkin. He does look like a pumpkin. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. What are those? I think those are where it's flowered. And it puts off these little fruits. That looks like pineapple. Look at this variegated agave. And here is Mexican fire barrel cactus, which I especially like this one because the spikes are pink. And that just makes it extra beautiful. Euphorbia, euphorbia are always so weird. Like what even is this? Look at this weirdo. What is that? Does it say what it is? What is that? It's such a weirdo little tree. What? What are you? There's this beautiful cacti. This one's called Old Man of Peru. <laughs> what a name. This guy's cool. I like how pronounced the spikes are. Like he's, he shouldn't be messed with. That's called um, Pitayo. Yeah, you don't wanna mess with him. Got some more prickly pear. All of these cacti look so healthy. Like there's just not a bad 
spot in sight. Oh yeah, we saw these all on our hike yesterday and we were wondering what they were called and I guess they're called Ocotillo. Ocotillo. Wow, that's so weird. We saw these all over yesterday on our hike. Got something blooming back there. Pretty purple blooms. That one is Texas Mountain Laurel Silver Pesto. We saw all, we saw a bunch of that hiking too. Do you remember? We saw a bunch of this hiking yesterday. It just wasn't blooming. This one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got this tall saguaro. Oh my gosh. It's so tall. I wonder how tall it is. What is this? That's so weird. Oh, it's a different type of choya. Chain fruit choya? Whoa, that's so cool. I've never seen like half of these plants. Look at how it's growing on like a tree and then it's got little things at the top. That's so weird. Okay, I found out what this little weirdo tree is called and it's called quiver tree in the aloe family. I like how they have blooming flowers planted throughout mixed in with the cacti just makes it so much more pretty. Here's a bigger weirdo tree. I love that one so much. That one's my favorite so far. These little agaves are blooming. Agave, aloe, I don't, what is it? It's an aloe, yep. They're blooming. Desert flowers are some of the prettiest flowers. All of these little cacti are about to bloom. I wish we could see them bloom. All those little buds, that's going to be so pretty when they all bloom. So there's this tree called Palo Verde. It says, like other Arizonians, we're proud of our state tree. It's the state tree of Arizona. It says the lovely green bark helps it save water, making sugar from sunlight without big green leaves. Neat. Your mom was asking us about this, I remember? She was like, if you just cut open a cactus, will water come out? And I was like, no, it's gonna be more like a goo than water. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at these little flowers. Are you allowed to touch the plants here? I don't, yeah, maybe I shouldn't, but I can't help myself, I can't. I'm learning that there are a lot of different varieties of this choya. This one is choya brincadora. There's so many varieties. Look at how massive these agave are. That's crazy. I don't know why I feel like I have to whisper. I think it's because it's so quiet here. It's like so quiet and peaceful, so sorry if I'm whispering. This is another art exhibit with the stained glass. That is so cool. Oh look, these are about the flower. Ryan, did you see these? Yeah. They're about to flower. Too bad they're gonna die afterwards. That sucks. I like these cacti here. They're so lumpy and weird. They remind me of the booby cacti, but it's it's not the booby cacti. I do know that. I do know that. I don't know what it is, but I do know it's not booby cacti. They have an herb garden. Let's go. Oh, what is that? That's some, uh... Does it move? Like it actually moves with the time? It's the shadows that move, right? Oh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Not I obviously don't know what a sundial is. <laughs> so it looks like they have an edible garden over here, but since it's March, it's. It looks like they just planted some stuff. Hey, little babies. They've got peppers. 
all kinds of different peppers. I bet this is really cool in the summer when it's filled out with edibles. This agave is huge. Like the camera doesn't even do it justice. This is just like, let me try to zoom out. It's massive, that just makes it smaller. It's huge, just trust me. We got some gardening tips from the botanical garden themselves. They have a sensory garden. That's cool. Does this mean you can touch them? Oh my gosh, that's so velvety. That's so soft. Is this one too? It's such a pretty day out too. Ooh, look at this one. That's cool. It looks like, are these, are these all gonna be blooms? Or maybe they've already bloomed? I don't know. This one is huge. It's like a cactus tree and the bottom of it is actually like a tree trunk. So I thought that these were all saguaro, but apparently not. Apparently they are cardon cactus, and it says that they can live for hundreds of years and grow up to 60 feet. It's weird how like these cacti are probably gonna outlive me, all of us, <laughs> all of us watching this. So this is a leather plant, and it's really cool because these blooms are like little red, fuzzy, fuzzball looking things. Here's a oh, focus camera. There we go. That's so cool. Okay, so speaking of the Cardone cacti, it says, look up, this Cardone towering over you is one of the garden's very first plants, more than 75 years old. It's huge. And there are these little birds sitting at the top of it, just like squawking away and there's there are holes like bored in them so i wonder if the birds like live in there do you think i don't know This is another huge cardone cactus. These little prickly boys are cute. This little bird is weird. Look at the little... What is that on its head? It's got a little horn, a little unicorn bird. This is just so cool how there's just so many like huge cacti everywhere. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Fine family contemplation garden. Brian, I think we were supposed to be over here contemplating. We were supposed to stand in here and contemplate. It, it says it's a contemplation garden, but we didn't contemplate anything. So should we, yeah, but should we, should we try to contemplate something? It says contemplation, reflecting thoughtfully on a life well lived, full of love. I think we need to contemplate. What should we contemplate? Um, what kind of talk is we gonna get later? Do you wanna get Beria tacos? All right, cool. I like that one, how it's got a tinge of red to it. Makes it pop. So here we have Gustav Stark's plants. 
apparently he's the founder of the botanical garden and also that's just such a cool name gustav excuse me stark like tony stark gustav i mean that's just like such a cool name and so this is cool it says acting to save the desert two bold plant lovers start a garden so it's gertrude webster and gustav stark founded this garden with a clear mission conserve our arizona flora fast being destroyed so they started in 1939 and they've been working to save the desert ever since i love that so much i just love botanical gardens they're so important it just keeps going and going and going this little guy is pretty weird Have you seen me? I don't think we've seen any of these. Actually, no, we saw a rabbit on the trail yesterday. Or a jackrabbit. What if it was a jackrabbit? Those have bigger ears, it looks like. Oh, I think it was a regular rabbit. rabbit. Peter Cottontail. So apparently that weird little bird that we saw with the horn is a quail. I never would have guessed. Oh, wait. Campbell's quail. I think the barrel cacti are so cool how they have like after they flower they make these little fruit things that look like pineapples little mini pineapples these ones just trip me out because they're just so cool it's like on a little tree but it's not a tree it's a cactus that's so cool and this is called feathery senna and it's apparently in the pea family interesting oh my god it's just like a forest of cacti. This is the, what is it? The Sonoran Desert Trail on the map? Yep. Wow. Look at all of that. And it just keeps going. This is the Less than 10 inches of rain yearly. Wow. That's like an organ pipe. Organ pipe cactus. Oh yeah. And then like with the mountain in the background with all the saguaros on it. Just adds to the whole vibe. That one specifically is my favorite one. Does the Choya cactus really jump? No, but it may seem like it does. Apparently, they're really easy to detach. They get on animals and that's how they spread. So that's why they're everywhere. Looks like it's fuzzy. Oh, okay, it's definitely, well, it's like semi-fuzzy. Like you can run your finger down it, but don't do go that way or you'll get pricked. Why is the saguaro growing under the Palo Verde tree? I guess it shelters it. So birds drop the seeds. The tree acts as a nurse plant, so it shelters it. And there we go. Aw, that's messed up. The saguaro will eventually cause the tree to die. That's yeah. fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sheltered it its whole life and then it Look, kills crazy. it? That's crazy. Can you spot these landmarks? That's Papago. That's Papago? Yeah. And then, that's Camelback Mountain. Right yeah. Okay. Piestua Peak. Peak? That's like way in the distance. So it says, why does the saguaro cactus have ribs? And it's because the ribs allow the cactus to expand and contract in response to the amount of moisture it's storing. So it's expanded here and then it contracts here. And it says that they can go several months without rain. That's so crazy to me. And it's, I think it's cool how the roots are shallow, but they spread out. 
because they've gotta gotta seek that moisture. Several months without rain is a long time. Little hedgehog cactus, that's such a cute name. Okay, I've been wondering about this because I see a ton of holes in the cacti and even when we were hiking, I was like, what is boring all of those holes? So supposedly it's woodpeckers. They peck holes to make nesting cavities inside the cactus stems. And the nesting cavities are well insulated from heat and cold. And then other animals can use it when they're done. So cool, I guess it doesn't hurt the cactus at all. What? Why is there like a giant root almost and then... A root? No, like look at that, the prickly pear, look at the... Oh yeah, like, like why is weird... the bottom like a tree trunk? Yeah, I know, it's cool, isn't it? It's like a tree. It's like a tree? It's hybrid. Yeah. That's so weird how they do that. Why no other ones? Or is that just a really old I think one? that they all can. Is that just Yeah, I think it's just the the longer they grow. I don't know a lot about cacti, but I love them so much. Is it dead or alive? I feel like it's alive because I think, you want to say it's dead. Yeah, I think it's alive. I think they're trying to trick us for sure. It's, well, it's dead. I'm kidding. Oh, it's, uh, wait. If it looks like, wait, what? If it looks like this, it's alive. If it looks like this, it's alive even though it looks dead. <laughs> so oh, it yeah. was a trick. It is, it is alive. <laughs> it does look dead though. Brian, you know how you were asking me like what does the saguaro cactus do for animals and stuff? Here you go. A lot of things. Yeah, so it's a restaurant for the bats. Features spring flowers and summer fruits. It's well insulated from heat and cold for the little woodpeckers, remember? All of these. And then sun. They nest in between them. And then they can get water from them supply they protect the cactus from being eaten the ribs are those strings ants yeah so it looks like a lot of animals rely on them so here's another art installation that is crazy so this is all hand-blown glass imagine how long that would take to make how do you put it together? I know. Like how? Do, like I would be afraid something would break. You know? Yeah. It looks so delicate. It's really pretty though. Beautiful. I think these cactus are really cool. I like how they grow in little groups together, little clumps. This is sparrow cactus, Potsii. Look at this one. This is a crested saguaro, which is supposedly really rare. It's rare for it to form that crest on top. That's so weird. Oh, I love it so much. So that's a dead one, I think. Yeah, the like dead saguaro. It's weird how it like it turns into wood, like a tree. That is so wild. Ryan, look, they can. It, this says that they also eat the fruit from the saguaro. Like you can eat the fruit. It says that um, it's harvested and cooked to form a juicy, a juicy pulp. And after straining out the seeds and pulp, it's cooked to make a delicious syrup. And it's also used in porridge, jam, and seed meal. So that answers your question. There's a lot more than I thought. Yeah, it's, it seems like a really important plant. So yesterday on our hike, we were wondering like what is the like how saguaros are useful like what do people use them for and now we're learning
that they're very useful. So this is really cool because I think it's showing how the native people use the cacti to build structures and just in their everyday life. And it looks like they have cut down like old pieces of cacti to make this fence. Cacti have so many more uses than I thought. And there's another saguaro growing under the Palo Verde tree, which we just learned is a mutual benefit to them. Well, I don't know, because then the saguaro kills it afterwards. So maybe it's only beneficial to the saguaro. <laughs> maybe it's not a symbiotic relationship. <laughs> This is so cool. Wow. Honestly, it would be really cozy in here, you know? So this was what the kitchen would look like because it doesn't have any roof overhead. But I think it's just really cool learning about how all of these plants were used by the Native Americans to build structures. You are entering the semi-desert grassland. So this says that people, the indigenous people, use shrubs, succulents, and a few trees to make brooms, hairbrushes, and baskets. We got a cactus down! Cactus down! Somebody must have tipped that over or something. I don't know. It's like pulled out of the ground. It's okay. Well, I'm, ma I'm the magic 69 now. Isn't that wonderful? So this is the Apache household. Oh, it's just so cool like how they is. utilize all of these different plants to make homes. Here's another um, glass blown work of art. The talent it takes to do that is just incredible. This is a different, a weird type of agave that I've never seen before, but it's called saw leaf agave. Oh wow, that one's pretty. That's so pretty. Yeah, I love all the colors. I like the color scheme of that one. There's more of these weirdo trees, the quiver trees. Those are my favorite. I love them so much. I wish I could grow those in my yard. We're gonna have to skip this one because we're running out of time. Oh, how pretty. I didn't even know these flowers. Something else I didn't know, century plants and aloes are totally different plants, but they look really similar, like I would have looked at that and called it an aloe. Moroccan mound cacti. Oh, sorry, that's not even a cacti, it's a euphorbia. Got this, I have some of this that is growing at home. Look at this one, isn't this weird? The little fruit thingies. They look like little grapes, little juicy grapes. All cacti are succulents, but not all succulents are cacti. Did you know that? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Yeah. Learning all kinds of things. Look, this is the tree that I love so much. It's huge. I wish that we could, like, grow one of these in our backyard. Don't you love that tree? It's so weird. Ooh, look at this one. Ooh, what is that? That's so cool. There's not a little plate name for it. It looks like some kind of euphorbia though. And this guy? What? And these aloe? 
Do you recognize that? No, it looks like a bonsai tree, but I know it's not. We have one of those at home. A, a big one. What? Yeah. This? Yeah. Oh, is that what you bought and it's in the addition? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a type of jade tree. Yeah. That's what it's going to look like it. one day. I just didn't notice it. Huge. Like <laughs> this one's a weirdo. <laughs> it's like a little... This long skinny tree with a little poof on top. That's so <laughs> cute. This garden is home to the National Collection of Cactaceae and is one of the largest and most complete cactus collections in the world. Wow. Look at this one. It's just like laying on the ground. When it doesn't grow upright, it like grows on the ground. Oh, I would not want to fall into that. No fossils of early cactus have ever been found, so scientists aren't completely sure what the first cactus looked like. We've got more glass blown art mixed in with all the cacti. Hey, look, it's another like prickly pear tree, basically. I wonder how old that is for it to have treed out like that <laughs> what's the pro there's a probably a proper botanical term for that <laughs> i'm gonna go with treed out that cactus is treed out this one's cool that's a thick boy more than a third of cactus at risk of extinction the cactus family is the fifth most threatened group of living things that's sad i don't like that oh so this go the golden barrel is endangered i didn't know that Oh no. Look at that one. How treed out it is. <laughs> the new botanical term that I have come up with. I guess they put those planks on them to keep them growing straight. I also didn't know this. To identify a cactus, look closely at the base of the spines for, <laughs> I wanna say areolas, but that's not, that's not it. <laughs> but anyways, it's uh, these little thingies. That's how you know it's a cactus. There we go, we learned something new. Oh, this one's weird. Special protection goat's horn cactus. Oh, here's a closer one right here. Oh, that's weird. Gotta protect the weirdos. And now we're having to rush and skip a few things because we only have like under an hour left and we haven't seen the butterfly exhibit yet. And I really want to see the butterfly exhibit. many of these he made and how long it took okay helicopters so it looks like a lot of the wildflowers aren't in bloom yet but i bet this is a beautiful trail in the summer <laughs> ryan just said is that a uterus <laughs> it looks like it though it's really cool how flowers like mimic female reproductive systems i think that that's just beautiful don't you mm -hmm. yeah it's just beautiful we made it to the butterfly pavilion. There's a lot more people here now than there was this morning, that's for sure. Look at all of them. I want one to land on me so bad. Please land on me. Look at all of them hanging out.
Well, that was it. That was the Desert Botanical Garden. How'd you like it? It was awesome. Do you I would have spent was, all day there. Do you think it was worth the $40 ticket? Yeah. I forgot to mention that before. It was $40 per ticket. I definitely think it was worth it just because of everything that I learned. And you get to see like so many more cacti and desert plants that you wouldn't see anywhere else. We didn't get to see every single little thing because we only had about two and a half hours. I would say you need at least three to four hours to do everything. I think we had to skip. The only thing we had to skip was the research center, which I actually would have really liked to go to, but we didn't have enough time. And I knew that if I walked in there, I would probably like nerd out and spend all day in there. But we got to see everything else. And the butterfly exhibit was a little underwhelming. It was hyped up more online on their website, I think, than it really was. I mean, you can see a bunch of butterflies floating around, but most of them were just kind of clinging to the wall and you couldn't really see them. And maybe they were just it was like heating up in the day maybe they were tired i don't know we got there around 10 30 and it opened at 9 30 so we probably should have went as soon as it opened because there were, by the time we got there there was a lot of people in there and it was just like i don't know it was okay it was okay but that was it overall i think it was worth it it was really fun and i learned a lot actually especially about saguaros because we were wondering the whole time we were hiking and we just saw like thousands and thousands of saguaros i was just wondering like what what are they used for like how are they useful to animals and insects and stuff and we learned that today so yep yeah okay well that's it thanks for watching see you next time bye